This is the Business Day exclusive interview. My name is Elizabeth Musa. Today, I have the distinct honor of being joined in conversation with the Director General of the United States Trade and Development Agency, Honorable Eno T. Ebong. I'm extremely delighted to be having this conversation with you, Eno. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Good afternoon to you and to your readers and listeners. I am really happy to be with you. Thank you so much. And you look very good. The pop of colors, bringing in some sunshine to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'll start by asking, I mean, as a Nigerian that is holding this very important position in the United States, what is the experience like and um, how are you working to enhance trade and investment opportunities between Nigeria and the United States? Well, thank you for that question. And I want to give a quick nod to the first part of your question, which I often reflect on where I am and where I've come from. And I have to say a, a lasting impression that I have is really one of great good fortune to be uh, in a country like this one, the United States, that affords me the opportunity to embrace my origin as a daughter of Nigeria and be a proud American citizen at the same time. Here, we very much value the diaspora and what it brings. In fact, the president, President Biden's advisory council on the African diaspora engagement in the US is actually in Nigeria as we speak, really emphasizing the importance uh, that this administration has put on diaspora engagement and the amount of opportunity, including to economic growth, um, the diaspora connections with partner countries throughout the world, including Nigeria, bring. Um, so I, I have to say, I find myself in a context of a country uh, that understands the import of the diaspora and leverages it throughout, including um, as we see now with the visit of the President's Council. On my part, with respect to the US Trade and Development Agency, I have been so fortunate to lead an agency that for the pretty much 30 years of our existence has had a very strong Sub-Saharan Africa portfolio and very strong Nigeria portfolio. So we bring our tools and they are critical to trade and investment because it's all about the necessary ingredients that you need for trade and investment. So let me just step back to say what it is we are doing to really provide these underpinnings um, that make economic growth, trade and investment possible. Um, we are of course focused on supporting the you know, highest quality sustainable infrastructure uh, at the same time, bringing US innovations, technologies, goods, services to those projects that we support. The key here is to provide grant funding for what is an extremely expensive, costly, risky um, undertaking preparing and planning large infrastructure projects. And so we bring grant funding to the work that makes those projects possible. Feasibility studies, pilot testing, technical assistance. And this helps project sponsors in Nigeria working on Nigerian priorities to be able to stand up key projects that will help economic growth, that will provide electricity, connectivity, health, transportation linkages, all the things that you need for trade and investment. We also focus on partner building um, uh, because that's very, very critical to build the relationships, um, to bring investors and bring technology suppliers to meet with uh, infrastructure developers in Nigeria. So that's a, a nut in a nutshell, um, what we are doing at the US Trade and Development Agency, the kinds of tools that we use to really um, facilitate trade and investment at the fundamental level um, between Nigeria and the United States. I think that you've already started giving me details of um, some of these things that you are doing. 
But I wanted to ask if there are specific um, specific projects or initiatives that you know the United States Trade and Development Agency is currently involved in within Nigeria, and what is the expected impact on the Nigerian economy? Yes, I am. Um, really, really important question. What are we doing now? So I would like to touch on, if I can, three sectors that I think are really critical um, in this space and critical economic growth, which leads to trade and investment, um, healthcare, uh, digital, and also clean energy. On the healthcare front, I was really pleased to be in both Lagos and Abuja in 2022 when I signed three grants in the healthcare sector and doing quite different things, um, but all leading to access to healthy populations, which will under, undergird and help the economy, strengthen the economy. So we are working, for example, with Lilly Hospitals Limited to take what already exists, 10 existing facilities and modernize and upgrade to be able to serve, and this is across the country, around 25,000 people ultimately um, wow. when, when complete assuming that the feasibility study, the technical assistance that we're working on goes forward into implementation. The second I'd like to highlight is Cedar Crest Hospitals, which is focused um, in the study we are working on, on cancer treatment and trying to stand up comprehensive cancer care in terms of diagnosis, in terms of technology, um, to be able to serve up to a thousand patients um, in Abuja. And then the last is an important element of, again, trying to reach people in remote places and the work that Moby Health is doing with respect to telehealth and telemedicine. And we're supporting Moby Health in trying to expand that business model, which has been quite successful in Nigeria to increase markets. So that's healthcare. And these projects are ongoing and already seeing results. Um, the second sector I wanted to just touch on really quickly is digital infrastructure. I think this is a very important space. Connectivity is key to all of our economic growth. And there, under the rubric of the Biden-Harris administration's digital transformation, with Africa initiative, which is an umbrella initiative that's seeking to really increase and accelerate participation in the digital economy across the continent. So under that rubric, we have been funding a number of studies. I'll just give one example, um, because it's in a little bit of a, a, a challenging location, which is in Delta, uh, where we are trying to increase connectivity for up to uh, 500,000 people um, using fixed um, wireless technology. And then lastly, in clean energy, we've seen some great success using hybrid of solar um, grid technology to be able to power um, cleaner energy, you know, sort of back up to diesel so that we can sort of reduce emissions, but also reduce costs. Um, and we're doing that currently with Daystar and um, these projects are moving forward. They are finding financing and finding interest. And that's ultimately what we hope to achieve. So those are just some some examples of how we are working in key technologies, in key sectors to really increase and enhance what our project sponsors in Nigeria see as priorities. I think it's very interesting that you shared all of this with us. I used to make use of Seda Crest Hospital, so it's very nice to see that you're also having this um, partnership with them. I think it's really applaudable. Well done. So let's talk about businesses and um, Nigerian businesses. So how can um, the USTDA support Nigerian businesses? I mean, that is something that many people are concerned about. Businesses need this, especially in this time that we, this time that we are now. 
Nigerian businesses need support. So how is the USTDA um, supporting Nigerian businesses to adopt innovative technologies? I know that you're big on, um, like you've mentioned now, you're big on digital connectivity. How are we able at the USTDA to support innovative technologies and practices to help Nigerian businesses compete in the global market? It's such an important question, and I have to say, one that we do focus on, we see all of the innovation, the creativity that resides in a country like Nigeria on the continent. And so the key is, how how do we make sure that that is leveraged and that these companies um, really are able to attain their objectives. Many of those objectives do require technologies, innovations, um, infrastructure enhancements. And so part of what we do, I'd say we do two things in particular to answer that question. Number one, we think it's important to come and see what is available. What are the innovations? What is a good fit, what can work. And so we have a tool, we call them our reverse trade missions, where we host delegations from our partner countries like Nigeria to come to the United States um, to see the technologies, but also to meet financiers. Financing is a huge component of all of this. So we're trying to provide a full ecosystem that Nigerian companies can leverage. So come and see the technologies, come and interact with financing um, entities. And if there is, because often with the standing up of infrastructure, you know, regulations and policies are part of it too. So we will include regulators to come as well to meet with our regulators and have those discussions. So I want to give you two examples um, of this kind of um, visit so that it's not so abstract. We are in not in a couple of months from now going to host a methane abatement reverse trade mission. As you know, lots of oil production, lots of flared gas. This can be monetized, okay? So mm -hmm. we want to make sure that entities in Nigeria that are engaged in this can come, identify methane abatement and flare gas technologies, look at what's possible and see what connections can be made here to monetize um, something that is existing, but can be used in a productive way. And then um, the, the one that has passed, actually, this was a very lively visit. It was on cybersecurity, another important element, uh, focus in the financial services sector. And we had a delegation of uh, Nigerians and Ghanaians. They had a great time, very focused on technologies and what's available. What I will add to this is, it's really interesting. Yes, this is an exercise in understanding understanding what technologies are available, but very often um, ideas are sparked, concepts are, um, are emerge out of these visits where the delegates interact. And, you know, we've had examples where then a project is built, then that we use our other tools, our grant funded feasibility studies to support. So to us, this relationship building, this partnership, which is focused on what it is that Nigerian companies are looking for to be able to build and grow. It's a really important tool that we have. And personally, it's always wonderful to meet the delegates. I always ask, what is your priority? So that we can make sure that we are building towards what it is that's going to be most useful for you and, and have most effect. Mm. We have an, a population in Africa where we have 60% youth. We have 60% youth population. So clearly we have more youth than the others. So what is the USDA doing, I mean, to support and to open up opportunities for youth engagement? So I would say, and, and, and youth, 
I mean, from my perspective, the youth is the future. And um, I, I think that uh, uh, certainly in the young people that I come across all over the world, um, very focused on, you know, trying to make a difference uh, and um, being creative in the way that they do it. Um, for us, uh, we are, again, focused on the ecosystem and trying to get an environment with respect to sound infrastructure that then anybody, youth included, can do business, can have education, because you need power and connectivity for all of those things, and can grow. And to have a, 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 a strong ecosystem of um, a partnership uh, that will help that kind of growth. And we think that the sort of the relationships that we're building now will help to provide that ecosystem where young people can thrive and grow. It's not in my agency's mission to have a specific focus on youth and youth um, education. And I know that many of our sister agencies, like the US Agency for International Development, I know that the cultural exchanges from the State Department um, of the United States all focus on these elements. I know our Peace Corps does tremendous work in bringing in um, young people. So as some might argue, it's, it's the less glamorous part of this kind of work because we're behind the scenes. We're building the infrastructure. We're making it possible that the young people of today can grow and thrive into productive citizens. But it is in things like electricity and digital connectivity and, and, and transportation linkages and healthcare. Um, but it affects us all. And if we can ensure a secure environment in terms of those fundamentals, then I feel that our youth will prosper, our youth will grow. And that's for our youth all over the world, um, including in Nigeria. With all of the work that you're doing, it's even the less glamorous side of things. You're building all of the infrastructure, doing all of these amazing things. But it's behind the scenes. People don't know how much work you are doing. But that brings me to ask the question about the challenges that you might be facing. Obviously, with all of these things you do, all of this project, all of these initiatives, putting this infrastructure together, there will be challenges. So what are some of the challenges that you face at the USTDA and how is the agency planning to address these challenges? So, Elizabeth, I have to tell you something that's very much on my mind is money. I mean, it's the financing. It's the financing, <laughs> Elizabeth, because if, if we can't get financing for these projects, no matter how many projects we prepare, they're not going to be implemented. So I, I spend a lot of time um, with the amazing team of people in this agency who are always innovating and always trying to think creatively as to how we can address issues. Even though, so I've spent the, the early part of this interview, of course, focusing on project preparation, which is work that we do. But I feel like we can't just focus in a very blinkered way on that. We have to look to the end point, which is implementation of projects, and in order to have that, you need financing. Absolutely. So that is my <laughs> that is a big um, issue that I want to focus on um, in terms of challenges. But then also talk a little bit about how we are trying to address this. So uh, I will start out with saying again, you have to be creative. So as an agency, actually, we've um, found excellent partners in Nigeria that are doing exactly that. And I want to highlight work we're doing with InfraCredit, which is the Nigerian infrastructure credit guarantee company that is looking at how to actually finance projects using local currency particularly debt instruments. I think you have to look at every single tool that you have. And I think that local currency is one that we should be looking at. And so we've partnered with InfraCredit 
um, it, we've um, actually worked with one of the companies that they actually re referred to us. Um, in our partnerships, we exchange pipelines. We want to know what are the projects that are going to be likely to be financed. And so this is a project, it's a digital project, but using um, solar technology, solar-based um telecommunication stations, right, to be able to power broadcast signals so that people can actually get uh, digital connectivity. It okay. needed to be financed. And so we did the preparatory work for the project, the feasibility study, grant-based feasibility study, but InfraCredit was able to structure a Naira-based transaction using debt instruments that is allowing this project to go forward. I think that's important. I think it's using, you know, a blended climate finance um, facility from the UK as well to supplement. But again, Naira denomination is engaged in. I think that's really important. Number one, be creative. We're working to do that with, with good partners on the ground. I think the second thing that we're doing is... You know, Elizabeth, there is money. Like there is, <laughs> there are sources of financing um, around that may not necessarily have familiarity with these markets, with our markets in emerging economies. Um, that we think that there's opportunity to engage using our tools and financing that might not necessarily be accustomed to emerging markets and bring the two together. So. Let me be specific. In the last COP, um, we made an agreement, entered into agreement with a group called the Investor Leadership Network. These are a group of institutional investors that have trillions of dollars, like $10 trillion under assets and are interested. They have expressed an interest in emerging economies, in, in clean energy, in climate, uh, and in critical minerals. So we have joined with them in this agreement to say, look, we can prepare projects, you have money, let's find a way that we can bring the two together to get this financing available. And then the last thing I'll say is that there are instruments that are being used in high income economies. I think of sustainable financing that is used um, by companies, especially in Europe, to get to the environmental, social um, and governance goals. Um, and it's sort of a well-known tool. Um, and so I feel in a, a very quite a fast growing asset class. I feel like as an agency, we've been investigating how these tools can be applied. Certainly not one size fits all, but it's worth looking at, okay, we're only using them in one part uh, in, in high income economies. Is there something there that can be applied? And we hosted a workshop in Abidjan um, earlier this year to just have that precise conversation. It was super, super well attended. And I think some really innovative ideas coming out of that. So those are some of the things that we are trying to do to address this issue of financing. And I would say just one more thing I would, as a, a U.S. government official, I always want to give a, a huge shout out to the work that we are doing across our government, um, because we do uh, work, especially um, our administration has tasked us to take a whole of government approach. And so our sister agencies, such as the Export Import Bank of the United States and the Development Finance Corporation are people uh, that we partner with and exchange pipelines with all the time so that we can actually connect up our projects to that kind of financing as well. So I've talked, sorry, a bit long on this subject, but it's one that I think is very important in the context of trying to develop infrastructure, um, which is, uh, in the end, going to help increase our trade and investment um, between us, Nigeria and the United States, and um, uh, Nigeria's other partners as well. You spoke a lot about financing, and it's quite interesting to know that at the end of the day, it looks like across the board, every single person, organization, 
everyone has to face issues of financing at one point or the other. So it's quite interesting. Thank you for sharing that. So we're going to the home run now. I'm going to ask you a question. You are a woman holding this you know, very powerful position in the United States. What can women in leadership learn from you across every level? Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much for that question. I would also say it's what can I learn um, from women that I come across in Nigeria um, and in other countries that I that I uh, visit that are accomplishing so much in sometimes quite challenging circumstances. So definitely a two way street in the possibility of learning. I think what I would say as a leader of a U.S. government agency. Um, but one that is external facing and trying to work with partners overseas is that you have to to demonstrate um, by your leadership uh, what you are trying to accomplish and how you are trying to accomplish it. So, for example, the importance of women, um, not only in um, you know the context of my agency, but in actually the context of infrastructure development. Women are very often the backbone of economies. Women actually have to engage in the infrastructure that we are seeking to build. Um, and so my huge lesson is we have to be inclusive. We have to hear these voices, um, diverse voices. And it's not a nice to have, it's actually a matter of sound business sense and judgment and success in what it is that we're trying to build. For me, that means making sure that we have a diverse work environment in which women and everyone else capable gets the opportunity to lead. And in an agency like this, it's important because then that impacts the kinds of projects that we develop. And it also impacts our efforts to make sure that we find project sponsors that are representative to include women of all of the people that are going to benefit from sound, high quality, sustainable infrastructure. So inclusivity, being open, and most of all, I think, demonstrating by your own actions, your belief, I think will get us to where we need to be. Absolutely. And I like how you just wrapped that up. Inclusivity, being open and being able to demonstrate um, by your own work where you want to be. And you also did mention that women are backbone of economies. And I completely agree with that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Honorable N.O.T. Ebon, for your time. I hope we didn't take any longer than you imagined. Oh. Elizabeth, it was such a pleasure. Thank you so very, very much. And thank you for the great work that you do. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Have Enjoy. A Have a great day. Thank you. Bye now.